Hello, Moon Babies. It's Molly. How are you? Welcome to the studio. Today, we're going to be making some ancestor lanterns for your Samhain and Halloween celebrations. So to begin, you're going to need a jar. I'm going to make a few of these. You don't have to, but you're going to need a jar that you can get your hand inside because we're going to need to glue inside and we're going to need to be able to drop an LED tea light in there. So make sure it has an opening large enough for your hand or at least a couple of your fingers. <laughs> and to create a beautiful glow, we're going to use some Mod Podge and tissue paper on the outside of our jar. You can use any color you like. I'm going to use these kind of warm candlelight colors, but I also think that a green ancestor lantern could be very cool and very spooky. <laughs> so to attach our tissue paper, we're just going to coat the outside of the jar with the Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can always use a little bit of school glue that's been thinned with some water. Now the tissue paper is going to be pretty fragile at this point because it's going to be very wet, right? So just be careful about where your hand is while you're wrapping your tissue paper so that you don't create tears in the tissue paper. And I'm just going to go ahead now and coat up my other jars. The jars are coated with the tissue paper. We're gonna let those dry and create the spirit shapes for the inside. And to create your spirit shapes, you're going to need a piece of black cardstock or construction paper and something to draw on your paper that you can see. So a piece of chalk or a white colored pencil. I'm using a silver Sharpie marker. So you can go ahead and doodle some spirit-like shapes you can make them however you wish. You might wish to draw people. You might wish to draw more spectral shapes. That's what I'm going for here. You could draw animals, plants, use your imagination and trust your instincts, moon babies. And once our spirit shapes have been doodled, we're going to carefully cut them out with a little X-Acto knife here. If you are going to use an X-Acto knife, make sure you use a sharp blade and a pair of scissors will work just well if you don't have an X-Acto knife. All right, our little spirit crew is all cut out here. Woohoo! <laughs> and now we're going to attach them to the inside of the jar. And for that, I'm just going to use a little bit of tacky glue. Use whatever you have. And I'm only going to put a little bitty bit of glue on them. You don't need to coat the entire shape with glue because we actually want some parts of the cardstock to be farther away from the glass than others. You'll see what I mean once you get your light inside the jar. It actually creates a little bit of depth and the illusion of space if your spirit cutout isn't completely flat against the inside of the jar. And this glue gets tacky pretty quick, so you should only need to hold it for a couple of seconds, just long enough to get them attached. And we're going to go through then here and attach the rest of our spirits, put the rest of our spirits in their homes. <laughs> So our spirits are in their homes and now it's time to address the lids of our lanterns. And this is really fun because you can get really creative with this. I have a bunch of junk <laughs> from floral arrangements. I have these from an old Halloween wreath. These are just some little plastic skulls that I salvaged from another project. So I want to use skulls. You can use anything you like. It might be animal shapes, beads repurposed Christmas ornaments. You might like to go a more natural route. You could use stones or shells, interesting pieces of wood, pine cones, anything you have laying around and that speaks to your practice, your aesthetic, and your celebrations. 
So I'm using up a whole bunch of different pieces of junk jewelry here. I do want to let you know not to worry too much about getting hot glue all over the place because we're going to paint these lids entirely. And actually, for this project, a little extra hot glue actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> so don't be stingy with the hot glue. Have fun with it. This is a great project to do with little witchlings too. Let them pick out all the fun bits and you captain the glue gun and you can make something together. All right, our lids are looking good. They're all glued together and now it's time to paint. So I'm gonna take these off to the spray booth and hit them with some spray paint. If you don't have access to spray paint or a well-ventilated place to paint, you could absolutely use acrylic paint for your lids. So here we go. I chose to use a variety of metallic paints. You choose what you like. And we're going to finish off the lids of our ancestor lanterns with a little bit of moss. I bought this bag from the craft store. I like to mix it up between some of this kind of scruffy moss and this more fluffy kind of reindeer moss. And we're gonna glue it right on to the lid of our jar. When I'm doing projects like these, I think it's fun to think about how I'm living my life so that one day I can be a good ancestor to somebody else. Our art magic projects are a great time for us to meditate on our lives, our blessings, things we want to achieve, things that we hope to provide for others in the future. So our lids are looking really good and spooky. Woohoo! <laughs> and we have just a couple more steps before we finish. I'm choosing to add an herbal element and make these more like a spell jar. So what I have in this little teacup here is a bit of wormwood as a grave dirt substitute. I have a little bit of sandalwood as a spirit offering and some rosemary for remembrance. And I'm gonna add a pinch of that to each one of the jars. I'm going to add some rose petals for love, for love and continuity. And finish up just a little bit here with a little bit of raffia for just a little bit of texture. You do not have to use herbs if you wish, and you can always use any kind of herbs that are meaningful to you and your practice. And now it's time to illuminate our lanterns. I'm dropping an LED candle into each one of the jars. Please, 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 please do not use a live flame, honeys. <laughs> LED lights only or little twinkle fairy lights if you have them. And just a quick tip, if you have a very big jar and you feel like the light isn't strong enough, just pop a second candle in there and you should get the effect you want. So we're going to seal these up and take them to the altar. I truly hope that you enjoyed this Ancestor Lantern tutorial, Moon Babies, and that you give it a try. I know you can do it. I want to thank you so much for watching and for being here. And a special thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. And if you enjoyed this video, you can find more tutorials just like this one on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd care to come and join us. But until we speak again, Moon Babies, sending you all the magic of the season, which on, which boldly, and be well, my friends. Bye for now.